You know, again, you know, people were reviewed this grievance and it's, it's completely fabricated. Um, and, and so, like, you know, it, I'm hearing this. I'm like, OK, so so for all this time, I'm supposed to imagine that that the the what, what created the great femoid backlash of 2024? I, I guess my, my original theory was uh, people not being able to handle uh, backlash. Right. Or maybe it was. Uh, maybe it was Rad Van Hitler just feeding it back, right? It was Rad Van Hitler feeding it back. Okay, but and so I hear on this podcast that oh well, we just don't understand. We don't understand why anyone would would use hyperbolic misogyny to make an artistic point. Uh, but but you do understand why people use hyperbolic language to to to, to make a political point. I mean. <laughs> oh gee, Alex, I'm 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 so I'm so I'm so distressed at at, at the at the existence of hyperbolic language and performative misogyny and people going overboard and you know maybe even doing things dangerous. They're organizing rape caravans, organizing rape caravans. Okay, what's your recommendation? The Scum Manifesto. The Scum Manifesto will get us back online. Um, <laughs> and uh, the the problem with all of this is is it's. I'm I'm kind of sitting there after this, and it's it's a fine podcast. I mean, any single sentence. I, and I I think I don't think people should not read the Scum Manifesto. It is you know it's it's not how feminist feminists usually defend it. Like it's performance art. Valerie Solanas didn't really believe this. Yes, she did believe this. Uh, she was unhinged. She was delusional, but she very much was a narcissist and someone who suffered from borderline personality disorder, in addition to the variety of other mental mental illnesses that she acquired by being the victim of continuous years of abuse and she absolutely believed this delusion so i mean you and you can appreciate it for the art that it is and i i've heard it said that morality should have no place in an art house and you know and and, and by the same token i appreciate many of the more egregious statements by zero hp lovecraft and bronze age pervert but the the, the problem is is there is no coherent I listened to this hour podcast. I've listened to, I've read Alex's thread several times over. I've read the similar objections written by Helen Roy. Uh, there's, there's no coherent, I, there's no coherent idea here that's at all actionable. It, it's a set of, it's a set of grievances uh, that that have that have no. <laughs> They they really have no coherency and and no substance and I'm supposed to appreciate them as grievances I'm supposed to hear them as grievances but they can't be politically acted on uh, we can't get rid of performative misogyny at 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 obviously and, and does Rad Fem Hitler even ask for that I mean Walsh is recommending the, you know, like what is it the Scum Manifesto is awesome but Bronze Age mindset's a step too far. And Andrea Dworkin's uh, pans about how all heterosexual sex is rape and how all heterosexual men are scum. That's, you know, that's literature. But zero HP Lovecraft telling women that they need to lose 20 pounds online is, you know, that's, that's, that's dangerous. That That's what's going to give women the ick online. Um, this is... I mean, it was a brilliant, and I can't express how much respect I have for Alex Kishuda. And I do even respect Rod Hefem Hitler's art, so to speak, as a Twitter performance artist, in very much the same way that I respect Val Valerie Solanus's art. As and I, I and I, <laughs> I do not think that that Rad Femme Hitler is psychotically delusional like Valerie Solanus, but I understand her craft to be in the same spirit. Uh, there, there is no actionable objection to this. This is this is pure emotion, and, and it's it's pure emotion reacting to a particular mode in social media. After you've done this for as long as I have right now, pretty much eight years, you kind of get an understanding of how the internet works. You kind of understand what exactly is going on, what, what emotions are circulating. Um, the, the emotion that's circulating in the rad fem, <laughs> in, in, in the great femoid backlash of 24, it is is an emotion of being disempowered and desiring a certain state of affairs uh, that can't be produced 
in, in, in essentially a public environment. Alex Kashida was right when she said this. She said, and, and this is her, her, her words, where she was very much, I, I don't say she's following Rad Femme Hitler and doing this, but this was her, her, her kind of um, statement that came out two weeks ago. She correctly stated that if you give women the ick, they'll go away. They're going to they're gonna leave this sphere. Uh, and, and that will they'll be an utter detriment to, to the right wing. Well, well, there's a few things here. Um, I I don't think you actually. I mean, I I I think that the problem here is is women want us to process this in, in a way that it's not possible to. Alex Kishida is not talking about zero HP Lovecraft or delicious tacos. <laughs> Or or Indian Bronson or or any of the edge lords that she has had on her podcast, she has or Bronze Age pervert. She's had great relations with all of them. I don't know if she's actually interviewed Bronze Age pervert, but she certainly discussed his her um uh, his stuff on her show. She's not talking about any of those individuals. Uh, what people are talking about are all of the anons that see the performative misogyny. And then repeat the performative misogyny without the irony and minus 30 IQ points. And that's how you get creeps. That's how you get people. And I don't, I don't doubt that there actually were a bunch of incels plotting a rape caravan that, that Alex Kashuda came across in some discord chat or whatever, or it was, I can't remember, was it Rod, Rod Femme Hitler? I don't doubt that that happened, but, but what we're seeing and what you see in the Andrew Tate examples too, and what you see in sort of the, the and you know, all these people have very cringe audiences. It's essentially ideas or it's a performance that's supposed to be done at a professional level. And it's being filtered down to people who are not cool, not smart, and not in command of their own capacities. And it comes off as creepy and weird. Um, okay, great. And you know, I think that the, the, the understanding is, is that that's how it is. And I, I, could, I could tell that when, when Brad Femme Hitler or RFH was talking about Valerie Solanus and Andrew Dworkin, she was. She came from a conservative background. She came from, I think, a military family. I couldn't quite tell in the interview, but a family that had no experience with, uh, with, with, um, with, with sort of mainstream blue progressive society. And then she went right from that to an abusive relationship, and and then apparently a divorce, and then a reemergence as kind of a shit poster hybrid between a right winger and a feminist. Um. She presented Valerie Solanus and Andrew Dworkin as if th these were relics. These were unknown artists. Uh, nobody would have ever thought of trying to do Valerie Solanus. Um, no one would ever thought of doing a variation on Andrew Dworkin. These are radical figures that no one ever reads. Um, yeah, Rad Femme Hitler. Uh, it, it looks a little bit different if you uh, grow up in an actual blue community or you see where blue communities are this day and age. Because believe me, the spirit of Valerie Solanus and Andrea Dworkin is alive and well. They are heavily read by every single 105, 110 uh, divorced mom in the Bay Area. And they're very much sympathized with and they're very much uh, copied and, and and variations are done upon them, and just like the 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 people who you don't like, you know the the hundred IQ uh, misogynists trying to copy Bronze Age mindset and, and, while they plan their rape caravans, just like that's cringe and 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 horribly icky to you. Uh, we've been living in the world that these part-time mom feminists <laughs> have been creating uh, for the last twenty years. <laughs> Um, this is, this is part of a process. Every single idea that, that comes out at a popular level in the 20th century eventually finds its way down the IQ ladder to a lower IQ level, such that when, when people like, you know, zero HP Lovecraft or Bronze Age Pervert, uh, the reason why performative misogyny is liberating. I mean, what, what do you think happened? I mean, was, does, does Rad Femme Hitler think that the, the order of events is uh, right-wingers were mean, 
Uh, then, you know, they planned the rape caravan. And then in reaction, Valerie Solanas and Andrea Dworkin wrote their radical novels of liberation. I mean, it's not crazy. I mean, Solanas and Dworkin were a reaction to male violence, but certainly not of the ideological kind that you're seeing online right now. Uh, no, what you're seeing essentially is you are reacting to a reaction to the very authors that you cite at a high level. Uh, you promote Andrea Dworkin, she gets taught, and then you get 105 Eight or, or 95 IQ, divorced soccer moms, working HR departments, making everyone's life a living hell, turning all of society into a stifling longhouse with very, very little opportunities to men. And we are in the situation we are right now where men are completely demotivated and <laughs> and repeating the cycle again and again and again. Uh, is this the process you want? I, I don't see a way out also by counter signaling misogyny since no names are ever made all we have is sort of like okay so the algorithm is promoting misogyny in 2024 well well that's that's great 